welcome or welcome back to Lynn McCurdy and the HDMMRC YouTube channel. Today something a little different. We're visiting Pat Ray, president of the High Desert Modular Model Railroad Club and his layout. So Pat, how about you tell us a little bit about your layout, starting with uh, when you started and how long you've been doing this, and any particulars about the uh, layout you have here. Yeah. So uh, we moved in in 2004, and that's when the layout started. It was all about uh, when we got the house, I was going to have a layout. I've had a layout with my dad every, every house he's ever been in. So. Uh, when I finally moved out of an apartment and had a house, there was going to be a layout. The garage was not going to be for cars. And uh, so it was a constant struggle at that time to make sure that you kept the garage free of boxes and clutter and everything else. So started out with just a, a basic idea of a little switching layout uh, over on the other side, which I call City of Industry. And it was uh, based loosely off of the uh, John Allen uh, Time Saver. And, uh, basically did that and left it open with a Y on both ends so that way I could uh, expand and so it was always a expansion it was always about building more and doing something more I never actually dreamed of doing it as I've done it basically going up um, that was just a uh, that was just necessary because I realized I enjoy track and I enjoy switching I enjoy running trains and so the uh, the layout has several different towns and different industries on it and that allows me to uh, generate switch lists uh, that have, you know, uh, cars coming from off the layout onto the layout, going to different industries and vice versa. So the railroad exists between Salt Lake and Denver. So it's the Arbor Division of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, um, completely make believe, uh, and it's that because I live on Arbor. And uh, so it gives me a a reason though to have cars come on the layout, not the layout. So one side goes to Denver, the other side goes to Salt Lake, and, and that's kind of how it how it goes. Uh, I keep building up because I can't build out. So this is uh, where I've, I've currently ended up is, uh, is is the new town of Durango, and then over on the far side of the layout, we'll be going to Silverton once I get that built. Uh, so I have fun with it. I spend a lot of time out here uh, just uh, running trains. Uh, there's four independent loops. So that the trains can run on their own without any type of interaction from me and then uh, there's several other loops that i can uh, run the trains on uh, there's two reversing loop sections in here uh, two y's um, and most of it has been done while i've been uh, either at night when i'm sleeping i dream or when i'm at work and i'm in a meeting and i have a piece of paper and a pencil in front of me i'll i'll diagram out a track plan and and go with it so uh, that's kind of how it's been Got a lot of a uh, lot of scenic detail to do, uh, a lot of fill in to do to, to make it uh, you know close to being done. Uh, it's a model railroad, so it's never really done. You know, I just continue to work and build, and it's what I enjoy doing, um, what I've known to do. I have fun with it. So, any uh, future plans? Yeah. So the uh, you know a lot of the stuff up front needs to be filled in and and scenery put in to hide wires. Um, probably the main or the last area I'm going to build up the last major section of track work is going to be the town of Silverton, which will be over by a, a mirror in the background, 
and one of these tracks here and then another track over there are going to meet up in Silverton and that will be the terminus of that division of the railroad. So uh, for me it's uh, the helper division. Uh, it's got steep grades. It's not made for uh, you know 20 car long freight trains and six axle engines. It's made for you know uh, maybe uh, four jeeps and uh, ten cars to, to get up the hill but that was a uh, design constraint based upon the space and room that I have. But uh, that will be the, the next and final final uh, part. And then I think I can go back and start filling in with uh, scenery to you know cover up the spots where you got a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense as far as plywood floating in the, the middle of the air. Of course it's pretty obvious this is HO and DCC and uh, what is your power supply for this? Digitrack I believe. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So use a Digitrax uh, system and uh, works well. I use uh, tortoises and uh, DS64s. I actually have a couple cobalts switch machines mounted here. I uh, use those because they're a little smaller form factor. Um, but yeah, basically Digitrax old DT402 throttles and a DCS200. Uh, I have the layout divided up into power districts so that way I can you know, troubleshoot and find issues. Uh, you know, I have uh, lights on all the buildings and uh, maybe later when the sun goes down I can turn those on. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Okay. I do use uh, software from a company called ShipIt to generate switch lists uh, for, uh, for running around. Well, thank you for uh, letting me come over and uh, video your layout Absolutely. and hearing all about it. Absolutely. And as we always conclude, from the mountains to the sea, from the desert of California, keep on modeling. <laughs>